start with head and tail recursion a little bit more. more. To review where we left off on Friday, we defined tail recursion as when the recursive call occur occurs near the end of the method. Um, and it behaves a lot like a normal iterative loop, like a for loop. Um, and so that we just had an example in the slide of printing numbers in decreasing order. We defined head recursion, where the recursive call occurs at the start of the method, or near the start of the method. Um, this example would print numbers in increasing order. And so we still have our terminating condition that we're checking for first, but then if we don't meet that, we have the uh, recursive call for, for head recursion. So I have another example for that for today. Um, and so I'm using the Java Visualizer tool, which is linked from our resources page. And I have the example head and tail recursion, which is actually in your current repository in its own project um, that I've copied and pasted into the Java Visualizer. Just another way for us to see how this works and, and try to develop this conceptual model for, for recursion. Um, so in the main method here, we're about to print out tail recursion. It's the highlighted line of code. And I'm going to click on the forward button. And when I do so, uh, we'll see here in the program output where it has printed tail recursion. Um, and then we're going to call the tail method and pass as a argument the string blizzard. So I'm going to step through that and now we're down here in the, the tail method. Um, we're going to check our terminating condition first. Um, being tail recursion, we're then going to first do like our small step toward the solution. So we're going to print the first character in the string. Here I'm using the char at method to do that. And when I step over this, you'll see the letter B is printed down here in the program output. And then as tail recursion, we're going to make the recursive call here at the end. And the simpler problem that we're passing along is the string with one fewer characters. Um, so we're doing substring one here. And when I step into this, we'll see that I'm back in the tail recursion again. What I like about the Java visualizer is it does a really nice job over here on the right side, helping us visualize the call sequence or the call stack. We can see um, each of the calls to tail and what that parameter is. So now the parameter is lizard. Um, so I'm going to step through this a couple more times and we're going to print out the L. We're going to make the recursive call again. And now you can see there are three recursive calls. So I'm going to keep going for a while here as we work our way through and we can see that call stack stack getting bigger and bigger and we can see the string being incrementally printed as we go and eventually we're going to get to the point where um, the parameter here to tail you can see here at the top is the empty string and you can see this huge call sequence that we've worked up here um, as we've worked our way through so when I step in this case, we're going to actually hit the terminating condition and we're going to return for the first time from the tail method. So there's all these calls to tail, but when I return, there'll be one fewer call and we can see what the return value is here. And we're going to be now back um, in a different call to tail. Now there's nothing that happens after we call tail, so this method is simply going to return. So basically no operations are going to occur. We're just going to see that the return value is void each time. And as I step again, there's one fewer method called to tail on our call stack. So we're going to step all the way through that and see the call stack, work our way backwards through the call stack. Much like when the dragon recommended to Martin, he work his way back up when doing the factorial problem. All right, so now we're back in the main method and we've printed out Blizzard. So now we're going to do head recursion. And when we step into the head method here, we can see that it's almost identical. We've just swapped the lines of code that prints the first character as well as the line of code that makes the recursive call. We're making the recursive call first, which is what makes this head recursion. So when I step through this, we're going to see that the first thing we do is actually call the head method and pass as an argument the string with, with the entire string without the first character. So when I step into this, we'll see that now there's a call to head over here on the right side with the string lizard um, instead of blizzard. And as I keep stepping through here, we're going to see the call stack get greater and greater as we keep making calls to head with shorter and shorter strings. And I'll just keep stepping as we go through that. Notice that nothing has printed down here in the program output yet because we haven't executed a single print statement yet. Um, so there's rd. There's the string D, and now here we are with, we've made all these recursive calls to head. The argument is now the empty string. We're going to check if the string length is zero. 
it is so we're going to return we're going to return you know nothing in particular void is the return value but when we do return back to the previous call to head we're now at the call that says system out print line string dot char at um, zero and so we're printing the first character in the string which is the D right now in this highlighted um, call here in our, our call sequence or our call stack. Um, so when I step over this, we'll actually see the D that gets printed down here to the program output, and then this method is going to return. And when we get to the method that called it, we can now see that the string is RD. We're going to print the first character in that string, which is the R. So we'll see the R get printed, and this call is going to return. And we're going to likewise continue as we unwind this call stack and work our way back up, printing the first character in each string. But because this is now head recursion, we're printing the string backwards. And eventually we make it to the first call to head where the first character here in the string is the B. We're going to print the B and we're going to return to the main method. And we're now finished. So hopefully that helps you visualize the difference between head recursion and tail recursion, as well as just further develop your mental model of recursion in general.